Hi, and welcome to IELTS Cast episode 45. Thank you for tuning in and subscribing on Stitcher or iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Today is a really interesting episode about immigration to Canada, and I talked to my colleague Patrick, who is a licensed professional in the space. It's a really informative episode, and I know you're going to appreciate Patrick's very actionable tips. Before we get to that, you might remember my friend Thomas. I know I've referred some of you to him for IELTS speaking practice. If you've sent me an email asking for an IELTS speaking professional's contact, I usually pass on his contact details because he's a very talented instructor and he teaches through Skype. Anyway, a few days back on Facebook, Thomas asked me what task 2 question type has been most commonly reported in 2018. And this is an important discussion to have every once in a while because the IELTS does indeed evolve and it's good to keep up with any changes to the test, no matter how small. However, it's interesting to note that what hasn't changed much are task two action words. Let me read to you the two most recently reported questions at IELTSblog.com to give you an idea. The first is, some people think cars are a better way of transportation around the city, while others prefer cycling. Discuss both views and give your opinion. And the second is, nowadays the most important task is the environmental protection of our planet for future generations. To what extent do you agree or disagree with this statement? So these task two question types won't be new to you. You can see the first is a very clear request for discussion. And of course, you're going to respond to this using a discussion essay structure. And the second clearly requires an argument essay. So you can see that the core question types, even in 2018, even the last two questions that were asked on the IELTS and reported to IELTSblog.com haven't changed much at all. We've seen these kinds of questions for the past 10 years. So keep practicing your argument and discussion essay structures. All right, let's get to the topic of today's episode. So I had a very informative conversation with my colleague Patrick Leong of 101migration.com. Patrick is a licensed immigration consultant in Canada, which means his practice is recognized by the ICCRC, the Immigration Consultants of Canada Regulatory Council, which is quite a mouthful. This is the regulating body for professional immigration consultation in Canada. Because I get so many emails from people asking for information about immigration to Canada, I asked Patrick to give me a quick rundown of the process and what he would recommend candidates do. In this episode, I'm only going to talk about the express entry application route. So if any of your questions are not answered, or if you are pursuing immigration to Canada in a way other than express entry, please direct your correspondence to Patrick. His email is patrick at 101migration.com, or you can find him on Facebook and Twitter, which are also under the name 101 Migration. So if you search 101 Migration on either of those platforms, you will find him. Patrick told me that the vast majority of people he works with that want to go to Canada seek to do this through achieving permanent residency, or otherwise known as PR, uh, permanent residency status in Canada. And I'm just going to define that really quickly just to make sure we're all on the same page. Permanent residency is an immigration status that allows a person to live and work in Canada for an undefined period of time. So this is, of course, different from a foreigner being in Canada temporarily as a tourist or a student or to fulfill some sort of temporary contract as a foreign expert. So permanent residents to Canada are issued a PR card, which allows them to travel to and enter Canada an indefinite number of times. PR holders must live in Canada for two years in a five-year period, and they get most social benefits that Canadian citizens receive, and that includes health care coverage and the freedom to live, work, and or study anywhere in Canada. Permanent residents, however, cannot vote in Canadian elections. So, as Patrick pointed out, there are different ways to apply for permanent residency. 
And the vast majority of the PR applications he sees are through the express entry method, which can be pursued whether the applicant has lived in Canada or not. And it can even be pursued if the applicant has never been to Canada before. So this in part explains its popularity. The express entry process is a points-based system that awards the applicant points for certain qualities. For example, I'm going to describe a profile of the most common applicant Patrick sees that has a likelihood of successful application for PR. This person is 31 years old, they are unmarried, they have no dependents, they have a bachelor's degree, they have three years of work experience outside of Canada, and they have an IELTS band 7 with specific scores of listening band 8 and then reading, writing, and speaking at band 7 or higher. So in this specific case, the applicant's attributes produce a total of 443 points. And to give you an idea of how competitive this score is, Patrick told me that there were 3,500 successful PR applications in the most recent round of the Express Entry Canadian Immigration Process. So these, so these are results that came out in April. 3,500 people were issued an invitation for PR to Canada. Now, the lowest score among those 3,500 people was 441 points. Okay, so the, the profile that I just described to you is 443 points. So you can see that the, the profile I have described would have only just squeezed by had they applied for Canadian PR. Okay, so it's this is the profile of somebody that's on the lower end of the scale of people that are invited uh, to receive PR to Canada. Now, for example, if their IELTS listening score were to be only seven, so if you remember, I told you that their, their IELTS band score was seven, and then they had an eight in listening and a seven in reading, writing, and speaking. If the listening were also seven, then the total points would drop to 337. Okay, so it was at 443 and it drops to 337. And so of course this candidate's application for express entry would not be selected because this, the, the points score is too low. So you can see that your IELTS really is very important. It, you must get that band seven with a listening band eight. It, you, you, can add, you can pretty much double your, your points for language by just having that band seven. Now the way that the system works is your IELTS score is converted to the Canadian language benchmark, which requires the listening score be slightly higher than the other skills. Now Patrick told me that in his experience, it is much harder to have a successful PR application when your IELTS score is less than band seven, and he almost never sees that. So the point score is also sensitive to age, as you can imagine. And as Patrick points out, 31, if you're 31 years old or below, that's the best age for application through express entry, um, because this gives you 110 points for age. But when, you know, if you're 32 and then onwards, it, these ages receive incrementally less points. Points can also be removed depending on your marital status and your education. And of course, whether that education was attained in Canada or not. Your points are also sensitive to your work experience. And this should, like I was saying, be three years at least. And this is evidenced by a letter from your employer, which would indicate um, exactly how many years of relevant experience you have. So in the event your express entry PR application is successful and you receive an invitation to apply, which is otherwise known by the initialism ITA, invitation to apply, ITA, you will be asked to submit your supporting documents in the next step of your application. Now, although being selected to submit documents to receive the PR card is exciting, as you can imagine, because you, you're kind of getting into the final stages of receiving permanent residency to Canada, there are still at this point a number of obstacles that you need to be aware of. And Patrick points out that these 
if you aren't familiar with these or are not anticipating these challenges, they could result in the forfeiting of your entire application. So the window to submit your documents is only 90 days. And there are a couple of things you need to have aligned during this period. So firstly, you need to be able to show evidence that you have at least the equivalent of 12,475 Canadian dollars or the equivalent of that in savings in your bank account. And this is evidenced by submitting your bank statements. So this is where people start to get into um, problems because they may not have had this money in their account before the 90 day window started. And if you dump a bunch of borrowed money into your account during the 90 days, this could be seen as suspicious. So Patrick's recommendation is to have your financial picture in place before you even start the express entry process. Okay, so that when you get your invitation to apply for PR or to submit your documents um, to receive your PR rather, you have the history of this money being in your bank account. Secondly, you need to submit a police clearance certificate and a medical report. And these documents can sometimes take months to receive from your home country. So you need to be aware of this and to apply for them as early as possible. Now, in the event your medical appointment date is positioned after the 90-day window, which does happen sometimes, Patrick informs me that you can submit evidence of this um, in place of the, the medical results. And even if your 90 day window passes, the, your, your hospital will submit the medical documentation on your behalf. And that's fine by Canada immigration and citizenship, but you just have to let them know ahead of time that this is what's going to happen. All right. So that brief segment should give you a few of the basics about express entry application for Canadian PR. So if anything was left unanswered for you or you have a more complicated situation and you want to get some personalized feedback on what to do, you can email him at patrick at 101migration.com or go to his website at 101migration.com or contact him via Facebook or Twitter. And that's again at 101migration. Thanks very much for listening and I hope this episode was helpful.